What's going on guys? Ishin here from Caesar Media. In today's episode, I'm actually in Sonoma, California, which is about an hour north of San Francisco. Kenzo was kind enough to fly me out again to attend another cool event, which is the Indy car race finale held here at the Sonoma Raceway. I'm in my rental Nissan Altima right now. Headed to the race. And thanks to Penzo for sponsoring this video and climbing out here for the weekend. 100 horsepower. <laughs> oh, it's a sleeper. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's a fast car. Be careful. Yeah. All right, so we're on the way to the racetrack now. And in the passenger seat, you guys probably know him. We got the Tom Magadan ZL1 here. What's up, guys? Uh, in the van in front of us, we got Engineering Explain and Motor City Mechanic. Go talk to one of the team pesky drivers, Didio. Oh, hi, how are you doing? These guys get the massive views. <laughs> oh, right. Talking about Monday and, yeah. and Tuesday, 20 million people watching yeah. every Monday and Tuesday. It's very hard for you to uh, not be recognized. Even today, still about 10 years, people come and say, Guys. <laughs> That's good. No, I race. I'm I'm race. Yeah, no. <laughs> now in a nightclub, when you go to a nightclub, people's waiting for me to start dancing. Like, Come on. <laughs> I can't dance 50 cent foxtrot, you know, so it's gonna be a little bit. Uh, Shell always wants them in a yellow suit, right? Yeah, no, everybody's like, hey, yellow, and they love that color, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, absolutely yeah. outstanding. Yeah. Aerodynamics at the different tracks, they can use different rear and front wing sets. Speedways for high speed for low, lower drag, they would just use single plane wings front and rear. Mm -hmm. So it really minimizes the drag. And then there's more of an intermediate setup where you're going to have a little bit more aggressive rear wing, two to three planes, and then the same with the front. And then for like your street races where there's a lot of low speed corners and you really need the downforce, these are very complicated. There's multiple, five, sometimes five different planes of wings. And obviously they can adjust all of that. So each manufacturer, Chevy, comes up with their package for the chassis and Honda did for theirs. So in some cases, now and then, there'll be an advantage for one of the uh, manufacturers on a specific track versus another one. All right guys, now we are in the garage pit area. We're gonna go for a walk and talk to some of the engineers and mechanics Learn a little about these cars. Thank you. So it might be some guys changing, but don't worry, they still have people. You're all right. We used to. It. It's okay. <laughs> this trailer is the 22 car trailer. So we kind of call each one by a car number. So it'll carry both of the 22 cars, the one car now. Uh, Hopefully we have another one car next year. It may, may change or it may stay the same, we'll see. But in this trailer, um, all the gearbox guys will all come in this trailer and do all their gears here. So each one serves a different function, basically. And the primary function of this one is just that gears. It's a big difference here if you, you know, with the hill on the back side of us, the way the wind comes around that hill will change from morning to afternoon. And turn nine and turn seven are some key turns that you'll see today of oh, that wind shifts and affect the car quite a lot. So obviously they're playing the game right now of which way do we think the wind's gonna go and what huh. gears do we need to have in. So hopefully oh, wow. we've made you know the right decision for the end of the day. How which many pads and motors do you go through a weekend? Um, you can run uh, one set. It's very track dependent on how much you yeah, use your brakes, right? right. Um, but it's not uncommon. You should be able to get uh, four events um, easy on the one set of brakes, but okay. you may change that as your brakes wear out, they're going to get lighter. So you may run lighter brakes for qualifying than put oh, heavier wow. brakes on for the race. So wow. I would say where you're at in your car weight is going to play a big role on what you would do brake wise. Uh, so this weekend, all of our guys would swap brakes multiple times. One open area for Indy cars is dampers. So we make our own dampers in house, um, completely de spec to our team, our car. And that's a huge area for us that you can have an you know an advantage. Obviously, if you're in your own stuff, if you're not at the top, you can have a major disadvantage too. So it's a you know double-edged sword there. Yeah. So pit crew, uh, you have to have long underwear on, no mechs, uh, tops and bottoms, uh, long sleeves, long pants, socks. Uh, obviously, a fire suit that's multi-layer fire suit, helmet. Uh, gloves that are fire resistant and your shoes have to be fire resistant. You'll see different guys wear different knee pads that kind of suit them for different tires that you may change. Uh, some guys will use some hockey wrist guards on their arms. You'll see those as well when they pull off 
where it, where it hits you quite a lot. Um, but basically the fire is the most protection in the helmet. That's what the series is looking for. I change outside front for Elio. I'm already out in pit lane. Uh, you'll see us wave him in different ways. And the other guys, once they feel him come by and they know he's gonna be clear, then you'll see them kneel down and sort of uh, approach the car in that way as well. All of our teams operate that way. It's yeah. pretty typical. Uh, all four of our cars, the Chiefs, all change uh, outside front. That's sort of, you're kind of the quarterback to the rest of the crew. You have to have Roger on the stand, uh, calling the shots, talking to everybody in the race engineer, working together. The crew chief will have a wireless intercom. So we are basically plugged into the stand with those guys at all times. We have you know, live data coming from the car during the race, so we'll have an idea if there's something wrong, whether it's tire pressures or we've lost some downforce somewhere. We'll see that on the load cells during the race. So we'll have an idea when there is a typical problem of aero or tires, temperatures, anything like that, we're gonna know ahead of time. Uh, obviously, if we lose that data stream for any reason, then we're kind of flying blind and we're relying on the drivers. Once the race goes, once the race starts, you're really just focused on getting to the end. Everything's Everything's done. If you have a good day, there's nothing else to do. You've, you've had your best car, you're prepared to the best you can be, and you just got a couple stops and uh, finish it off, hopefully on the right side of it. We're gonna fire up here in about 15 minutes. You'll do one last warm up before you head out to the grid. Uh, every driver, we make our steering wheels in-house. Uh, every driver has their own set of grips, so we'll spend a fair amount of time working on these grips. Uh, you can check out, you can see Joseph's there and how much different Joseph is just at the top of his hand. That's, that's one spot that's different. All these buttons will move around for each driver as well. Where does he want the radio button, trim button? Shift paddles and clutches, same thing. LEOs are very symmetrical side to side. If you would look at Simon, Simon has a very large clutch paddle on the bottom. And he only uses that in an emergency. He spins or has contact where he can just grab that. He's very comfortable with it. You'll even notice on Elio's, he can pull in the clutch and still select first gear with that little cutout. So it just shows you how much each driver you know, wants to change the simplest thing uh, to make them more comfortable. Uh, we have map settings on the steering wheel and in the chassis. So you can program those however you want. You're gonna have uh, very rich settings where you're burning a lot of fuel trying to go fast, and then you're gonna dial it back and try to save fuel, try to make that three stop window. Uh, you'll hear each team, a lot of teams use coded fuel numbers. They'll change it every week, uh, only they're gonna know what they're telling their driver. You can obviously see lap time and sort of get an idea. Uh, some t teams do not use a fuel code, they'll just tell the MPGs out right over the radio. Uh, so you'll hear drivers switch in these throughout the race to one, two, five, six, and that's purely just to do one of those things. Either save fuel, go faster, or maybe even save the tires. So we'll have a couple maps in here today where we can do just that. Try to take care of those tires. That 20 laps, you're gonna start losing the rears pretty big, and you're gonna see guys sliding around really struggling. Information on this dash, you'll see the lights light up, very typical of uh, rev lights. Each guy will use those differently. Elio might like his light set 100 less than Joseph or vice versa. Uh, just the, the brightness you can change. So it, all these drivers like everything just a little bit one way or the other. Talk about the oil a little bit, the capacity, temperature, and the cooling. Yeah, so the oil is was specific. When we started with the Pennzoil, uh, they definitely fast-tracked uh, 040 for us that was not available at that point. So it was a short window and did a phenomenal job of getting that to us with the series the spec oil. So all the Chevys run that oil uh, in IndyCar and it has to be commercially available. So not only do they have to develop an oil that was fast for what we needed to be, reliable, uh, they also have to get it on the shelf as well. So it wasn't just uh, a race side of it only. And the big changes that we have with oil is gearbox oil is, is open full development as well. So they play a huge role with us. Um, we've ran 30 different uh, gearbox blends now uh, to this point, completely partnered with Pennzoil on that. We run five different throughout the season, so it uh, obviously plays a big role of where you're at. You go to the speedway where your high RPM, low torque is much different than Long Beach Street Course where your you know, low RPM, high torque coming off that Long Beach hairpin. So uh, engine oil is, is really set for the series now from them and then you're just managing temperature up as well. So around 100 is the um, 
sort of key numbers that we'll play on if you look at most cars. How many posts do you put in? Is that like a should you drive something? Or is it like a personal yeah, so it's, it's a really good question of how much oil you run because every track's different. Here you see these crests over the corners right. and you'll get oil dropouts. So you have yeah. to run more oil on these road courses than you would on an oval where it's constant side G loading. Uh, there are no baffles in the oil tank. So every track is going to be different for there weight. Multiple pickups? Multiple pickups? In it? No, one pickup in the tank. Yeah, the tank is very, you know, funnel shaped. Uh, Chevys and Honda have to run the same oil tank. That's spec for the cars. Um, so you're, you're constantly balancing of how much oil do I have to run for a weight balance? That, that's the number one thing. You'd run as little oil as possible if you could. So every week you're looking for those dropouts and okay, we have to add a half a quart or a quarter quart wow. just to make that difference. Yeah, it's, wow. it's huge. So I was over there talking to one of the crew chiefs, Travis, a very, very knowledgeable guy. He knows a lot about the Indy cars. And uh, in particular, we're talking about the engine oil that's in these Indy cars. And actually the Chevy guys run 1040 oil, the Penn's oil, Platinum series that you can buy from the auto parts stores, the same oil that you can buy from the stores, they run in these indie cars. And these engines have to rust for 2,500 miles, which is about four or five races. What's good about Penzo synthetic oil is that it's also created from natural gas. So, unlike your traditional conventional oil that you create from crude oil, these are actually a lot cleaner. So in IndyCar, there's two types of tires, or three types, including ring tires, but the red ones are the grip tires, high grip tires, and then they got the white tires, which is the normal tires. But look at the size of these tires. 415s, they don't even mess with 300s. Drivers, please stand by. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. I'm back in my Nissan Altima, headed straight to the airport to go back to Detroit. I hope you guys enjoyed the footage. I didn't cover too much of the actual racing because obviously you can watch that on TV or you can watch it on YouTube. I wanted to keep this video informative and educational as always. And after learning more and more about Pennzoil, I think I'm gonna run the Platinum Pen. W40 in my race cars as well. So thanks again for watching the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.